Council's Corner, brought to you by Team Green Law. For you, with you. It is that time again to talk about legal things, and the man that can do it all is with us today, R.T. Green. Thanks so much for being here. Uh, it's a pleasure being here. Uh, thank are, you for asking me, having me back. Well, we just know that you have a lot of great advice for a lot of viewers out there. We've already tackled the topic of motorcycle accidents last time you were here. Today, we're going to talk about something that might affect more people, and that's a slip and fall injury. So let me first of all ask if somebody out there either themselves has had one or knows someone, what are the ways that you all can support a client in a slip and fall injury? Well, the, the big thing about a slip and fall is trying to get the information as quick as we can, okay? And the reason being is if they fall, say, for example, at a, a big box store, okay, those folks come out and they start taking information and in many instances, the person hurt is not taking that information because they're hurt, because the adrenaline is pumping. So it's nice and as quick as you can get somebody involved legally along with, if you're with a friend or whatever, taking some photographs, to, uh, trying to keep track of the information that needs to be collected. It's unlike, say, you had a car collision. Police officer shows up, starts taking the information, and so you don't have to start from ground zero. You have some information on what the other party, what may have happened, have witnesses. Whereas if you do a slip and fall in many instances, that information is not immediately available to you, the injured party. You know, it's funny because I think we don't, uh, so many of us don't think like this because mm -hmm. we, we all want to help someone. Mm -hmm. We all want to take care of people. Absolutely. And realistically in that moment, you're not thinking about the repercussions down the Road. Which is not unusual. Sure. I, quite frankly, it, it's it's unusual if somebody starts taking that information. Usually, though, what what you can is at least after the fact, you might have somebody come back to take some information. You might have somebody to come back and ask, "Is there an incident report? Who do who do I see about this?" And my my friend has hurt themselves, mm -hmm. and you go from there. Sure. That's the reason why we encourage people at that particular point in time. If that if you're at that point please give us a call. You need to get a lawyer involved to start collecting that information, particularly if you're hurt rather seriously. That is broken bones, all of a sudden you've got a problem, maybe a pre-existing problem that's now now active again. Sure. And so you're thinking you're thinking long term at that particular point in time and need some assistance. So what, uh, what do you think are the most uh common situations like this? I mean, what do you see most frequently when it comes to slip and well, falls? Well, first things when a lawyer thinks about when you, you were to give me a call, say I, I slipped and fell, I want to know where your classification, what do you mean classification? Classification, there are three classifications of people that come upon someone else's land. There is the business invitee the, or the uh, social guest. There is the licensee that comes on because of convenience, uh, of curiosity or entertainment to somebody's land. Okay. And then there's the trespasser. There was out permission of the landowner. Mm -hmm. And the, the duty owed to you or by is just dependent upon the class of person that you are entering the land. So in the instance of, of the big box store, you're going in, you're asked to come in, you're invited to come sure. in. So in that situation, the owner owes you a duty to protect you from harm. Okay. And that in, that includes even activity that occurs on the, on the property at that particular point in time. So I know when I start my investigation, that person has a greater duty to you, the injured party. It then steps down, if you're a licensee, it steps down when to, to, you're a trespasser. If you're a trespasser and this person did not, the owner of land did not intend to hurt you, I can't do much for you. Sure, sure. So there's a lot of variables. Exactly. And this is why legal advice Absolutely. is so important. Now, how do people reach you in this situation if they've had an accident? Well, we're obviously, we, through the uh, internet, we could do that on, on our website, teamgreenwall.com. Okay. Teamgreenwall.com. I get that right, I hope, anyway. <laughs> and the phone number is 812-234-2369. 812-234-2369. Just call, because it never hurts to call. It never hurts to have a consult in these situations because you might be entitled to damages. Well, we you, we don't get paid until you get paid. So you can talk all you want to with us and we can give you what we consider the appropriate advice and then you make a decision whether you want to get us involved or not. If you make the decision not to get involved, you owe us nothing. If you make the decision to get us involved, that's fine. We don't get paid until you get paid. So it doesn't cost you anything 
other than we will ask that you're being honest, we ask that you cooperate, and we ask that you be patient. If you can give us those three things, we can take care of you. Well, there you go. Thanks yeah, so much okay. for coming in. All right. It's another great segment, and we are going to continue these each month, so we hope you'll join us with our Council's Corner next month.